guys again anybody that want to hop on take a seat in this conversation please feel free to join in because guys the follow-up question to does job security still exist and i want you to either post this in the comment screen or hop on if we know job security does not exist then what are you doing to protect your family's financial future uh welcome karma carry to the blab tonight welcome welcome so uh karma today's topic does job security still exist i was sharing with everyone that's on the blab right now this topic came from a friend of mine who i tried to share an opportunity with a couple months ago and she turned it down because she said she was secure with her job okay she was happy doing what she was doing and which i feel like okay that's fine but to me you should always have some type of backup source of income just in case something happens and now just recently she was laid off okay she was laid off and she had all this so-called job security so-called loyalty to this job but they weren't loyal to her they laid her off so uh again y'all post in the comment stream or hop on and um let us know you know does job security still exist and ali again let's see ali says the only way to be free is to create a business or have multiple streams of income besides a nine to five yeah yeah absolutely uh ali so create a business i mean ali do you have any suggestions um ali post in the comment section what do you do what are you doing to create you know multiple streams of income and yes greetings william to the blab session greeting greetings um what i'm doing also anybody that hops on this blab i am going to follow you back so make sure you follow me so that way any blabs you guys do i will make sure i hop on your blabs as well but i'm following everyone on here right now and again guys anyone that want to hop on take a seat there is an open seat if you want to hop on and join this discussion you know feel free let's see karma i have job security but it doesn't exist unless you do everything on your own well so karma kind of let's let's elaborate on that you said let you do everything on your own what do you mean by that what do you mean um about that there are you saying your security comes from because you know based on your efforts that your job is secure so elaborate a little bit more about that for me because what i've noticed is even if you are a top performer like ali was saying earlier in the comment stream even if you give 120 percent every single day on your job it doesn't matter when it comes down to if they have to make cuts if something is about to happen in the company they're going to cut you know people and if they cut you what's your backup plan what's going to be the backup plan if your job decides that they're going to downsize and cut you let's see ali do 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 even using using not unionized jobs are not secure yeah absolutely du, du, du. oh okay karma's a freelance makeup artist um a ha at home baker and your mom's mother caretaker okay awesome karma that is absolutely awesome and welcome uh ta tanya to the conversation welcome tanya to the conversation let me go ahead and uh follow tanya right now so tanya for you um just hopping on what we're talking about on this blab tonight is does job security still exist does it exist you tell us put it in the comment stream join us uh, hop on open seat but my follow-up question to that question is if job security does not exist what are you doing to protect your family's financial future just in case your main source of income goes away and i see a lot going on in this comment stream no problem tanya welcome again and karma says but i was working at a company in which i felt i was secure from one day to another and they let exactly like i know a lot of people who have worked with some great companies and thought they were going to be there forever and then one day something happened they were no longer there and you know this was their main source of income they did not have a backup source of income and now their family's lifestyle is in jeopardy so again guys if job security does not exist and we know this why do so many people decide not to build multiple streams of income y'all tell me y'all let me know what's going on <laughs> you know let me know let's see these comments here 
do, 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 Ali, the nine to five shouldn't be your mainstream. Of Absolutely not. You know, matter of fact, growing up, you know, my dad has always told me, see, my dad has owned a business, you know, all, all my life. So for 34 years, my dad has owned his own business. So just like with Karma, she owns her own business. So nobody can fire her right now. But like she said, she had a job to where at first somebody could fire her. So my dad has always taught me, you know, if you're going to work a job, learn all you can, you know, from that job. So that way, one day you can start your own, you know, and the knowledge you gain will help you be successful in your own business, because in your own business, nobody can fire you. Nobody can fire you. So um, being your own boss, I mean, yeah, absolutely. Oh, a couple of people joined. So welcome, Christine, to the Blab. Welcome, Queen B to the Blab. Let me go ahead and follow everybody that has hopped on. And if you guys will, please follow back. Please follow back. Greg, what's up, Greg? I see my boy Greg just hopped on. Greg Wilson, everybody's in the building. <laughs> so, again, ladies and gentlemen, you know, a lot of people on this Blab right now. Today's topic, does job security still exist? I appreciate them high fives, guys. I appreciate them high fives. Um, does job security still exist? Guys, post in the comment stream. If I have anybody that want to hop on and take a seat, you know, hop on and take a seat. Let's talk about it, guys, because there are so many people out there right now that, um, I mean, let's face it, living paycheck to paycheck, guys. You know, um, they they thinking they're, their job is secure some people you know they may not be living paycheck to paycheck i know some people that's making six figures right now at their job and that's all they want to do and i ask them hey listen okay what happens if you cannot physically go into work tomorrow to perform your job what's going to happen to your family's current level of lifestyle if you cannot live continue your same level of lifestyle if something happens to your job why are you not building a second source of income so, guys, my follow up question to the main question is, if job security does not exist, what are you going to do to protect your family's lifestyle? And see, Mr. Muhammad has a question down here. Do you think that so many people are in the job market because they simply do not know how to bring dollars behind their inner vision? Absolutely. That's a good question, Mr. Muhammad. Some people just don't know how to spark an idea, <laughs> you know, and get the funds to make that idea happen okay so what what i'm going to say is um that's why having a mentor is so important you know um somebody that can guide you in the right direction and that's why honestly for most people having a job you know it's going to start you off to where you want to go as well because you can use those funds at your job to help you build your vision just like karma was saying i i, I bet karma when she had her job she was using some of those funds to help fuel you know what she really wanted to do before she left her job so you know they simply don't know how to bring their dollars behind their inner vision absolutely so nobody has taught them how to apply the dollars they have to help move their vision in the right direction so i truly believe that's why you have to have mentorship right my dad was a great mentor to me but i also have had other mentors in my life that have taught me how to use my dollars to bring forth my inner vision. So that is a great, great question, Mr. Mahdi. Does anybody have any more questions or want to join in to the platform? All right, we have a guest. Mr. Hey, Mahdi, how are you? Your, your family, how are you? Great, greetings, greetings. I am awesome, man. Good to see you. Mr. Shahid, thank you so much for accepting me onto the uh, panel. Great. Um, and, a, and a super topic, just a super topic. Can you hear me okay? We can hear you loud and clear, man. Great, great. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, for those of you who have not been to a Blab before, uh, or maybe this is your first time with this experience, uh, Blab is, is a different kind of platform. It's not like Periscope and Meerkat, where it's one person um, making a presentation solo. And we call Pericat, uh, Periscope and Meerkat uh, one to many presentation platforms, one to many. Blab is designed to be a conversation, just like four people sitting around uh, a, a, a table at, at Starbucks. And so it's a much warmer environment for engagement. 
uh, Mr. Shahid can accept people onto this, uh, or I should say into this conversation at any time, and it's meant for exchange. So let me ask um, a question. Um, if if every let me see let me see the people let me see yeses in the comment stream for everyone who believes that they that they are they absolutely should have a second source of income. Just just put yes. Just type yes in the comment stream for everyone that's here live that believes that they should have a second source of income. Yes. Piece of the pie says. Um, you know, you should definitely have, uh, you should definitely save. And if you can do a 401 um, through your job, then do so. And if you are not, if you're self-employed, there are Keogs and other forms of tax deferred uh, investment instruments that you can use as a, as a self-employed person that have the same, um, this, that have the same savings, uh, affect the same savings capacity as as your standard 401k on a job so there are you know there are a lot of ways that you can build your savings up um nobody responded the question was if you guys are here and it, it seems like there's seven people here if you believe that uh there you should have a second source of income because you're saying that job security you know doesn't exist then put yes in the comment stream, just type yes, because blabs are interactive. Very interactive. We we you know welcome the interaction. And while we're waiting on those, let me see. So Christine says I work too hard in my first source. No time for a second source. And Christine, hey, listen, I totally understand where you're coming from, right? And my friend that sparked this topic was doing the same thing. So my question and that's the whole reason behind it so i understand you're working very hard i get it i totally get it but what's going to happen if the hard work you put in for some reason lord forbids lord forbid something happens but what's going to happen if that first source of income goes away and i understand what you're saying about savings 401k i get that so that sparks the question again does job security still exist do you feel secure at your job you may you might you might you just might feel secure doing what you're doing you know um i just know from history what i have seen that i have a lot of friends that um you know felt really secure and then for some reason or another they lost their job you know whether it be health issues whether it be um you know the job decided to let them go you know i mean something so you know we have to find a way i understand that people are busy you know i get it i totally get that but just knowing and seeing other people what has what has happened to them you know is it possible to carve out three or four hours a week to invest in other ways to generate extra income just in case something happens because i mean you just never know right life happens you never know so I, you know before i started let me see, get somebody jump back in before i started you know um my company that i do i have two companies that i pretty much do on the side now outside of you know my main career but before i started the other two i felt the same way that i was very busy very very busy i couldn't start anything else up but after i seen other people go through certain situations to where you know they were so committed dedicated and then they lost their job i was like whoa wait a minute I have to do something to prepare my family for just in case because you just don't know. So again, the whole topic of this conversation came from a friend that I recently just offered an opportunity to for her to be able to diversify her income. She turns it down and then guess what? Lo and behold, not too couple months later, she gets laid off. So what if she would have started something as a backup to prepare her, you know, for that? Okay, so if job security does not exist, if I see a couple of comments down there, Greg put yes. So if it does not exist, guys, you know, what are we going to do to prepare our families um, for just in case? Because we just don't know. Karma had had a couple of suggestions. Well, she pointed out some things that she was doing 
uh, currently that she um, if I can scroll up real quickly I can I can kind of take a look at what it was that she was saying she was involved in I think one was um, help me come oh she said she was a freelance makeup artist uh, that she baked um, and probably I, I guess she she bakes for the public but she does it from home and um, and that's all because she's a caregiver and her time you know right now her time is just as valuable as the income that she needs to make and so there's that there's that balance and a lot of people um, have that in this case karma's case she has she she feels the need that that she wants to be a caregiver for the person who cared for her when she couldn't care for herself which is her mom and that is a noble uh very noble gesture but you know a lot of people are in that uh situation they have family members be it um, be it aging parents or um uh, children who have special needs and they're wrestling with this whole thing of uh how do i balance time how do i uh, make sure that well how do I balance and the balance is uh, money versus time you know it's money versus time I need the income right um, because I have to make sure that all of the things my living expenses are, are met uh, but at the same time I have th these situations that really require my time and it could be an aging parent, it could be a special needs child, or it could be just regular life because people that are in neither of those situations, they don't have aging, um, they don't have aging parents, they don't have special needs kids, they just have a family. And with a growing family and the needs of a family, um, you know, as your children are growing and they're involved in extracurricular activities and school activities, and uh, things that you want to engage them in that broaden their um, their experience as a human being, those things demand time. Where does the time come from? If you're plugged in a minimum of eight hours, why do I say a minimum? Because you've got prep time to get to work, you've got drive time to get to work, you've got <clears throat> drive time back home. So it really turns out to be a 10 hour day at minimum if you're leaving your place uh, your home to go somewhere to uh, trade time for money, mm, mm. trade time for money. And so I guess that uh, brings the brings up a question that I have. Um, what are some of the ways that we can break free from having this need to trade? Here's a better question. Here's a better question. Scratch that. Here's Mr. <laughs> Shahid with your permission. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. I'm going to throw this out and I want some comments. Job versus income. Are they one and the same? Job versus income. And here's the reason why I'm asking, are they one and the same? Because in my experience, everyone over the age of 16, no matter what continent you live on, everyone over the age of 16 needs income because they need to be able to take care of the things that are important to them and they need some way of exchanging monies for those things that are important to them so everyone needs income but the question is does everyone need a job mm. and you got to know the difference between the two see everyone needs income but does everyone need to have a job? Do you need to, um, you know, and is, is your need to have a job as the way that you earn income a mindset? See, that's the tag question. That, that's the question that rides on the back of the question I just asked. Everyone needs income, but does everyone need a job? Mm -hmm. And if you feel that you need a job, if you're equating job with income, is that a mindset thing? Are you are you at a level mentally right now where you believe that your worth, your value is better determined by somebody else that has you getting out of your place, out of your home, going to a location 
doing a task for a certain number of hours in order for you to receive what they feel is the worth of that activity that you did. Wow. Chew on that. That that's a great question. And uh, Ali put some comments down there. Ali, you should come take a seat, man. That's not like you're an expert on this yeah, topic. <laughs> listen, that's what lab is about. Ali, just you know, come and hit the join button and join the lab. Simple. It's no big deal. Uh Christine, you know, uh, I'm not in college anymore. I know you see my frat stuff back there. <laughs> but yeah, I graduated from the Fort Valley State <laughs> University. Uh, back in 2004, you know, but yeah, not in college right now. And um, it's funny that you ask uh, about school because um, I went to school for business. And funny thing is, none of my professors owned the business. <laughs> but uh, back to Mr. Muhammad's question, you know, do you feel like you need a job and is job and income the same thing? I mean, I need some comments on that. I see. Uh, Christine, you put not necessarily the same. So you guys elaborate on that or come in and take a seat and come tell us why. Come tell us why, because I will tell you while we're waiting that growing up, like I said, my dad has been a great mentor. My dad has owned a business, you know, since I've been born. OK, 34 years. And um, my dad has always told me, start your own business, because my dad understood the difference between income and job. OK, because honestly, I feel like you don't need a job but you do have to have some income coming in now is there ways to produce income you know without having a job absolutely especially nowadays with all this technology out there to where you don't have to go trade time for dollars to create income you don't necessarily have to go work for somebody else nine to five to produce income but you do have to go back and have a way to use your current dollars to go out and start something with your vision to have that income, you know, come in. So, cause there's plenty of ways, there's plenty of ways out there that you can generate income without having to go to work for somebody else and build their dream, you know, eight hours every single day. Piece of the pie says that um, the people that are doing, you know, some things that she, she sees people doing things on, uh, on the internet, like Etsy and eBay, um, and she calls it weekend work, but um, she's wondering whether or not it's enough to be able to survive on. Well, I have friends who are involved in e-commerce sales, and that's what that's called, um, piece of the pie. And um, there are a lot of programs, as Mr. Shahid has said, uh, one of them is called DS Domination, and it is an eBay-based program. You can go and Google that. And I have personal friends um, that are doing, not have done, but that are doing extremely well in that. Um, it involves uh, taking items that are, that are posted on Amazon and having Amazon as the, as the middleman, uh, you reposting those, those same items on eBay with a, with a degree of markup and because eBay is instantaneous, people are looking for deals. Uh, they'll go to eBay to look for a deal, and they figure that if it's on eBay, it's at a, it's at a deal. Uh, there are people that are making tremendous amounts of money uh, listing items on eBay that are, you know, from small dollar amounts to things that are hundreds of dollars and, and earning commissions every day. Uh, as as others buy those products. So uh, it just depends, you know, when you, you you're asking the question piece of buy, can enough money be made? Well, you know, a good friend of mine who's a pro blogger, among other things, but he works this eBay business that you're talking about. And he uh, he earns typically somewhere between uh, 40 and 50 thousand dollars a month just from his eBay business. His name is Jim Chow. Mm. <laughs> Mr. Jim Chow, and you can Google him. Um, you know, here's a person who um, who works within a network. He isn't, you know, he's not. It's not that he's brilliant, but he's chosen to associate himself with people who are 
as hungry as he is. And it's a it's an interesting thing when you put yourself in the midst of people that are uh, as hungry as you are uh, for uh, new and better ways to not only have an amazing life, but to make sure that all the bills are made, then you, you're by you being in that company, you are able to adopt some of the practices of other people and you find yourself learning things that you may not have known before. So it's not that not that people like like Jim Chow and others that I know are extremely brilliant. They're just putting themselves in what are called global wealth networks. They're putting themselves in networks of people who are uh, as hungry as they are. They're having these masterminds. They're using technology, right? The cell phone that you're looking into 40% of your day, that one, they're using that technology to mastermind with other people that are as hungry as they are. They're forming these groups and they're um, uh, taking their ideas, sharing their ideas with other people, getting feedback like we're doing on this blab and they're coming up with businesses. So they're, ma they're, they're making the transition from job-based income, listen very carefully, to project-based income. This is a group of people who share a, a similar vision. They mastermind and collaborate, build a project, and from that project, income comes out. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, Christine, to answer your question, you put, can you both tell us about uh, what you do? So um, I'll, I'll go first and I'll let Mr. Uh, Matty come up and kind of get you know, a little bit about what he does but uh, a couple things one I'm a, I'm a consultant so i have a mastermind group uh like mr mahdi was talking about where we collaborate and you know we help business owners um take their ideas um take what they're excited about things that, that they're good at and help them start businesses and brand themselves online okay so that's the first thing i do help business owners brand themselves online so if you have a business if you have an idea and you're not sure on how to get that idea out to the masses you know my mastermind um comes together and we collaborate and we have a platform to where business owners can come together share ideas and get their business out there to the world and brand themselves so i'm a consultant with that and i'm also um, a travel agent um right now too so anybody needs to travel <laughs> and come see me so i do that as well and we had a couple of people um let's see hopped on here Sam, what's going on, Sam? My good buddy Sam has just hopped on. Sam's coming to take a seat. Awesome, awesome. Sam, Sam, welcome, welcome, my friend. Once you get on here. So yeah, Christine, that's a little bit about what I do. So help people brand themselves online and I book travel for people. <laughs> Mr. Matt, do you wanna kind of give her a brief background? Sure. Um, I am in the business of helping people, organizations and businesses take take their ideas, their talents, their skill sets and share that with a larger audience. So you don't have to be uh, a business person. You could be an individual um, and, you know, perhaps you are. Um, perhaps you have a talent or something that you just love to do. You know, a part of the, the project that we have shows people how to take the things that they love to do and attract other people. You might have friends that, you know, enjoy the same things that you do. For example, um, you could be a skateboarder. See, it doesn't have to be anything that's business related. I want you to see how cool this, this is. Um, and we're talking about transitioning from job based income into project based income. We have a project where um, a person who is a skateboarder, a teenager who's a skateboarder can gather together other people who are skateboarders. Right. And build a network of people that are really interested in skateboarding. And so they we show them how to build a Facebook group behind that. Uh, we show them how to take ownership of uh, tools that help them uh, uh, share with the world those things that they really love. So in this example, they're skateboarders. So we show them how to take ownership of digital tools like a blog platform, um, 
like um, digital pages that that they can develop that speak about all aspects of skateboarding. They can do podcasts about skateboarding. They can do videos about skateboarding and put it on their blogs, right? So as these people form a network of other folk who love to do what they do, and each one of those people take ownership of tools that help them to share their passion with the bigger world, well, every time somebody comes inside of that network and takes ownership of the tool that helps them uh, talk more about what they love, the, the one who invited them into the network, uh, an income is generated for that person. Our, our system is, is so amazing because it doesn't put you in a box, right? It doesn't say you have to go and do this, sell shake mixes that, that, that takes like, tastes like cake mix, or you don't have to sell coffee, or you don't have to, and there's no knock against any of those programs. But we're not putting a person in a box to say, you have to do this in order to earn money. On the contrary, we found a very uh, simple, elegant, fun way for people to collect other folk who enjoy doing the same things that they do, take ownership of tools that help them share that passion with the world. And as they attract people into their network and income is generated. It's really cool, really right. cool stuff. And, and I get a lot of joy out of it. Phenomenal. And welcome, Sam. That's my buddy right there. Sam has joined the conversation. What's going on, man? Hey, it's all good. Good stuff, a, man. It's a mic check, mic check. We hear you loud and clear, clear bro. Awesome, man. Uh, this is my first time um, uh, actually on the broadcast here at Blab. Sam, it's your first time, and you're and and the props are you just blowing up with props, man. Tell hey, me the secret. I tell you some good stuff. <laughs> Absolutely, hey, Sam. So if you look to your left, there's a a button right there that says "Tell a Little Bird." If you click on that, it will share it out to all your friends on Twitter. So go ahead and click on that for me real quick. Go ahead and share it. All right. Tell yeah, that's bird. already done. Awesome. Good stuff. So, so, Sam, the, the, the uh, opening topic, and for everyone who's here, um, Mr. Robert Thomas, welcome to the to the Blab session. The topic is, does job security still exist? And there have been a number of people who have who have stated a resounding no, it doesn't. And so um, that that still is the question. But we're about to change the the topic, and we, Sam, um, Zach, you're the moderator, you can do that. Um, since so many people have said no, we're now into exploring other ways mm -hmm. that uh, that will give people a more secure, a more secure feeling about their future. And by the way, there is no such thing as security. There are only varying degrees of risk. <laughs> right. Some things are a lot more risky than <laughs> than others, like putting your life in the hands of someone else uh, that determines your worth that um, that measures out where you have to go, how many hours you have to be there, what task you have to do in order for you to uh, receive uh, some reimbursement for the time you've put in. That's extremely risky. And so some things are just more risky than others. There's no such thing as security. But but um, the other question that we uh, discussed earlier is, um, is job and income, are they synonymous terms? I think people are getting, uh, they're in a mental rut. Um, and we're in the 21st century. So if there was ever a time when we could be freed up to do the things that we're most passionate about, this is the time. Uh, if there was ever a time for my story marketing, where you have technology tools that fit in the palm of your hand, that allow you to mastermind and collaborate with people on in another continent at the speed of now. Right. Right. Th this is the time. This is the we're in the era of my story marketing where you can take your experiences about the things that uh, that you enjoy most, the things that you have done that bring you uh, excitement. You can take those experiences and turn those experiences into readable, watchable, listenable content, 
and then put that content online where other people can access your content who will resonate with you, who will want to partner with you if you have a project or if you have a business offering, even become a customer of yours. This is the time for that. <laughs> so there's never been a time uh, like, like the time that we're in. And thank you so much, for, uh, Christine, for joining us. We're absolutely ecstatic and, and anxious to hear what you have to say on the topic. Oh, well, you guys got me thinking now, so I had to come in and share. Um, can you guys hear me okay? Oh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah. The and I, I'm going to pop out, Zach, in case somebody else wants to take a seat. Robert okay. uh, just joined the, the room. Maybe he wants to take a seat. And um, I'll be. All right. So, yeah, the more I think about it, now you two have heard of Kodak, right? Right. So Kodak um, is in my hometown, and they got so huge, and then that giant fell, and, you know, everyone got laid off, and they're down. I mean, buildings have been demolished. So I started thinking, like, oh, security in, you know, the corporate world, and how these businesses start off so small and then they blow up into huge larger than life corporations, but then they all fall and um, people get laid off. But then what, um, I forget his name, uh, Mohammed was it? Right, what, right. What yeah. He was talking about, you know, with the trend of like, everyone's coming up with good ideas and starting their own small businesses which may grow into huge businesses that may fall. And then it all starts again. Like, I just feel like maybe it's, that's the cycle of, you know, the nature of the beast. Yeah, it can be. Um, you know, I think though, when you start your own business, you feel more in control though, because, mm -hmm. you know, you kind of control your own destiny. Like the, the bigger corporations like the Kodak, you know, when when they fall through, that was their idea, that was their project, that was their baby, and it's like they're not really giving you a heads up on when that's going to crash. Okay, it, they don't really give you any other options on, you know, what you can do after that goes away. So now you invested all your time, all your energy into this company, and they crash, and it's like now what? You know, you had no backup right. plan. You know, if you look at a lot of the 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 big business owners out there, the millionaires out there. A lot of them have had businesses that that's crashed before, but since mm -hmm. they know how to build a business, they always can start over again and rebuild an even bigger business from right. from scratch. You know, so um, yeah, so you're, you're right. Down. Yeah, I mean, like the poor, you know, factory worker, like like what's he going to do? You know, he's he's known that one task for so many years. If he never went anywhere else, mm -hmm. exactly. Um, so. Exactly. And, and I'll piggyback on that. Uh, with what Christine's talking about the factory worker uh, literally has to, um, you know, that's when an individual have to uh, come to realize that, hey, you know, I got to create. I got to I got to think out of the box. I got to be more creative and either learning. Well, the only way we can elevate our income is is by gaining a skill. Um, and, you know, once you gain a skill and what uh, Dr. Muhammad was talking about was that uh, we're in a digital age. You know, actually, a lot of things are going digital versus uh, analog. Um, industrial age has gone. So really, it's just all about uh, how can you acquire a skill in the digital world and monetize it? And by doing so, once you create enough value in the marketplace to where uh, you can you can create a demand while the demand is high and you have a, an ability to move into the market and share with the market how you can help them in a way uh, to help, help their needs, then you can, you can pretty much fill that gap. It's, it's really not about if you can create value in the market, the income is going to come, period. Absolutely. Right. Like, Christine, what do, you, what do you feel like you're great at? Something that you you know you're great at that you would love sharing with the world. <laughs> um, I don't know. Uh, I mean, you know, it's hard for me because I feel like I have good ideas, but there's no follow through because I'm just mm, lazy. And uh, so that's <laughs> you know that <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or maybe they're not great ideas. Who knows? But uh, 
I mean, I work for corporate, I'm in the financial business. And, uh, you know, the more I think about it with those side jobs, I actually do have multiple side jobs that I do throughout the year. Um, like, you know, eBay, or uh, I drive cars around the state. Um, so, so yeah, I think probably a lot of people have that sort of structure where maybe they just do work here and there, but they got their main boring just corporate go. job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I think we all been been there and, and done that uh, yeah. when it comes to uh, creating cash flow. Because the first thing that comes to the uh, average person mind is, hey, you know, I got to go get another job, you know, uh, to, to make ends meet. Uh, but but again, we're moving into the digital world. There's a way to create cash flow instantly. And you just got to mm -hmm. find out how to tap into the market. Uh, Dr. Muhammad was talking about uh, create, you know, tools, uh, uh, digital tools that that someone can uh, literally harness understand how they work because all businesses need digital tools so if you if you found out how to um you know grow how to how to uh possess those and master those and then you can teach it <laughs> it's just yeah. that simple and you can get you can get paid to teach it absolutely so because christine what i've learned and this goes back to what i was saying earlier when my dad taught me you know, if you're going to work a job, learn all you can so you can apply it to your own business. Right. It's because mm -hmm. what I know that I'm good at, I have always been good at motivating people, bringing people together in teams, training people, developing people. So I've always been good at that. So mm -hmm. my thought process now is because I know I'm good at that and I know I've, I have built these massive teams for different companies. Why not do it for myself? So. I got together in this mastermind that I'm a part of now, and I have built this massive team of people that have some of the same leadership skills I have, some of the same goals I have, and we're able to share those ideas you know, with people and brand ourselves now rather than just brand a certain company because, as you said, if a company like Kodak goes out of business, what happens to my income? And the thing is, the way technology is set up right now, there's so many ways to generate so much income that you can replace, like Matthew was saying, your job income with project based income if you get with the right people that can show you how to do it. So luckily, I've just been blessed to get around some great mentorship and around some great people that's like, hey, Zach, here's how you use your skills, the things you're passionate about to take your ideas and share them with the world and get and guess what? Create income from it. So yeah. awesome. Hey, Christine, uh, while you're in the in the seat, I just wanted to ask you a question. Um, you said that you had some ideas about didn't follow well, through on. So I, I want to I want to share with you that um, and for everyone that's here on the panel uh, and Zach, you may want to we may want to shift the title. Now you're, you're able to do that from your from your uh, moderator panel. Um, yep. What I what I invite you to think about Christine, as well as everyone here, um, is that you don't have to look at this as a business. See, in a lot of senses, some people, uh, the word business puts in a lot of trepidation, a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, because business means, wow, responsibility, it means payrolls, it means, you know, how do I process the money? It means, you know, a lot of things. And, um, for that could be a, a, a impediment to your growth. So we don't want any mm -hmm. impediments to growth. People are sometimes using business as a term when they really are saying, I need income. You may not need to start a business. Everyone here in this panel that's watching this blab, the answer is not necessarily that each one of the people individually here need to go and quote unquote, start a business again. What we want to look at is the transition from job based income models where you go to a place, you do a task at a low you know, uh, for a certain number of hours and receive um, a value that someone else determines. Instead of doing that, is it possible that you could mastermind and collab use 21st century tools that you have in your hand all the time? Right. Your cell phone, for example. Um, use your cell phone to mastermind and collaborate, find other people 
that have uh, similar interests as that you do and start to mastermind with them, start to talk about the things that you have in common, for example, and use social media, use Facebook, use Twitter to develop masterminds of people who share similar interests. Now, you were saying, Christine, that you had ideas about business that you didn't follow through on. Let me give you something simpler, right? There are things that you are really passionate about that you enjoy doing when you have free time. Yes or yes? Yeah. Name one. Just name one. Uh, Something that you enjoy doing. For me, I love cycling. It's something I like to do. Bicycle riding. I used to race bikes when I was younger. I love cycling. What's, What's something that you love? Well, I love uh, animals and like pets in general. Okay, so you, you're a pet lover. Great. So is it possible that you could uh, develop a network of people who are pet lovers or yeah. join a network of people who are pet lovers? See, yeah. it's possible that you could start a Facebook group for people who love pet lovers I'm sorry, people who love pets and attract people, use use tools and systems, social media tools and systems, and learn the art of attracting people to your network on Facebook, mutual pet lovers, right? Mm -hmm. Learn how to scale up that group, that network of people who are pet lovers, right? Mm -hmm. Learn how to use social media tools and online marketing tools to scale up the number of people who come into your network. And wouldn't it be interesting if everyone in your network uh, found some uh, product or service that they agreed had value to them as pet lovers, and you all set up a system where as people come into your network, they agree, hey, you know what? We're going to all purchase X, Y, Z thing, whatever that thing is. And uh, everyone in your network is is a is a mutual owner, a co-owner. So as new people come into the network and they purchase X, Y, Z thing, the one who invited them into the network When that person that comes in purchases X, Y, Z, right, then an income is generated for the person who invited them into that network. And they're all pet lovers. See how simple that is? Did that take any rocket science? No. It's just amassing a network of people who have a love for things. Could be skateboarders. It could be surfers. It could be whatever the thing is. See, we're in an age now where people really need to turn on their brains and understand the power of networks, the power of Mm -hmm. networks. You don't have to be a quote unquote um, business genius. You don't have to be Sir Richard Branson, right? You don't have to be a business genius. You don't have to be a, uh, a product genius like Steve Jobs. You don't have to be a software genius like Bill Gates to build a very comfortable income, right? You can build a very comfortable income by bringing people together who share a similar passion in the 21st century, use online tools to build your network, have some product or service that everyone in this network agrees has value to them because it's something that people in that network find valuable. Right. Something that pet lovers would find valuable, something that skateboarders would find valuable, something that surfers would find valuable. Mm -hmm. And as people come into that network, they purchase this thing. And an income is generated for, for the person who invited them into the network. It's an incredible way to. Uh, to, to for individuals to be able to generate income outside of a job and be able to scale up that income simply by simply by scaling up the size of their network. See, now it's not dependent on you being a, a, a business, uh, a salesperson, right? Um, a super salesperson or uh, internet marketing guru or a, um, uh, an inventor or any of those things. It has 
it is it's just a matter of you using skills that you already have that you were born with the ability for you to build relationships and draw people into a network of relation you know who are related to you based on similar likes does that make sense yeah yeah it's all it's all good stuff that you're saying <laughs> well there are a lot of other people here um the social barber uh we welcome you to the to the hangout and um David Vaughn has joined us. Thank you yes. so much, David. Yes, welcome, Social Barber. And uh, yes, thank you, David, for joining. So to do a quick recap of how this subject started, everyone that just hopped on, the first question was, does job security still exist? And it was a resounding no for most people on here. So we transitioned to, OK, the second question was, well, what are you going to do if we know job security doesn't exist? What are you going to do to protect your family's income? And then Mr. Muhammad posed the question, is having a job and income the same thing? So that's how we got to this, this question now. Do you need a job to create income? And we welcome David. So, you know, any feedback, you know, any comments you want to give us on here, we've been listening for a while, you know, please come in. Christine, are, are you are you good, Christine? Does that does, did that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Christine, do you do you mind if we offer your seat to someone else who may have a question? Did you have another question? Oh, no, I'm good. If anyone else. Wants Absolutely. To come Maybe on. someone else. We can get another person in with some new insight. Absolutely excited to have David. Well, thank There's you. There's a little X there somewhere, Christine. <laughs> I agree with everything, Muhammad, that you said. And I think the critical thing that you talked about, which is passion. And when you're in a job, you're doing what someone else wants you to do to get to the income. When you're following a passion and you're networking, that's something that you'll get up and do every day because you enjoy it. And the income will come because I think what 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 she was actually challenged with is what we typically think of is people want to have something to sell and then I want to sell it to you. Well, people don't want that anymore. They've gotten slapped in the face by infomercials and everything else. I don't want to be sold, but I do want to be your friend. I want to network with you. I want to learn from you. And by doing so, if there's something that you're interested in and that you believe in is something you might be using, I'm by natural curiosity, is I'm going to buy that product. So I think you're absolutely correct that networking is a way to build and get to that income but passion is what drives it. Passion is what will keep you up at night and drive you to get where you want to go. Because I agree with the very beginning of the call there, the job security, um, knowing for myself, you know, after 26 years with a company getting displaced, it told me right quick that job security doesn't exist. And I need to look for something that I own or I can run and I am in control of and networking and passion and today you're correct 21st century tools allow us to reach masses of people i've met people on blab and on periscope and on online from countries that i've never been to i've never stepped foot in i've i've learned and met people that had it been 20 years ago i would have never come across i would have never met and those people that you meet and network with builds up yourself. You begin to get stronger because like Christine said, she she has ideas that she never follows through on. By networking, she'll begin to get confidence and she'll begin to grow herself and she'll see things flourish in her passion that she just loves. Awesome, awesome. David, may I ask you a question? Um, sure. What are some of the things, just name me two things that you really enjoy to do? <laughs> and it may not have anything to do with what you earn income for. What are the two things that you just absolutely enjoy? Well, the, the two that always have been on my mind, and, uh, and I'll start with the, the, the one first, is I've always loved photography. Okay. Um, I've always loved capturing pictures, and, and that's always been my passion since I was in high school. Um, and it's something that's always been a hobby. Uh, I actually started to go to college for photojournalism, and the school I went to didn't have one, so I scrapped that and kept it as a hobby. The other one is as as long as far back as I can remember as a child, I've always been 
a person that wanted to help other people. I wanted to listen, hear what they had to say, let give them a place of a sounding board. So I enjoy helping and listening. And when social media came about and when the internet came about, it gave me a platform to where I could do that without having to leave my house and, and be able to touch so many other people. Because you, you know that when you look online, there's so many people that have things that are bothering them. And in the old world, what did they do? They had to go sit on someone's couch and talk to them and pay them. And now they can come online and they can share and people have commonality and common bonds. So I enjoy just like being here in Blab and sharing and hearing things where people have commons and, and I can learn from them and they can learn from me. Awesome. And so here we have, thank you so much for that. So what I, what I heard from you was uh, two things. Number one, you absolutely have a, a love and a passion for photography and you've had that for some time. And the other thing is that um, you are really excited about, the time that we're in, the ability, for the, the, the fact that we have these social media platforms that allow us to connect and share like never before, and you get a real charge out of connecting with people um, who have similar passions to, you, to yours or who have different passions, but you're able to just connect with the fact that they're passionate about something, right? Absolutely. And so again, ladies and gentlemen, we're in the age of my story marketing. We're in the age of 21st century tools like Blab, right? Like Twitter, like Facebook, like Periscope, like Meerkat. These tools that allow us to connect and build an audience like never before. In the last 10 years, where did the individual have the opportunity 10 years ago as an individual to build an audience like they have now. So you don't have to wait to be the next best publisher. You don't have to, to uh, get a big contract from a publishing house to, to sell the next best bestseller, right? You can publish your work, develop an audience on social media that can see your work, love, resonate with what you're writing, right? develop a following, get on a social media platform like Blab, tell the story about your body of, of literary works, have, have your audience geometrically scaled up through, through having sessions like this on Blab, and overnight, you are, you've got orders coming in the door, right? Not through, not through some publishing house, but coming into your door for your books, for your books. You don't have to wait to be uh, stamped by Hollywood to have the next best uh, television series or the next best internet talk show. You can do right. that right here. You don't have to wait. You can act right now and build audience. We're in an age now where you can build audience like never before. So David, going back to David, says that he loves photography. Is it possible, David, that you could take your love for photography and uh, build a network of people that also like your, your uh, specific niche in photography? Because there's so many niches in photography. There's adventure photography, there's travel photography, there's food photography, there is, you know, there is portrait photography, there's, there's wedding photography, there's so many niches. Within, within photography that you could build a network um, that, that is in the niche of photography that you enjoy, uh, create a Facebook group, right, that loves that niche, scale, use social media tools and online tools to reach out to other people who love that niche, draw them to your group on Facebook, Find some product or service that all people in your interest group would love to have. They think it's valuable. See, you know, you don't have to go out and sell anything. Right. You can you can talk to people that are in your niche that are that enjoy your passion 
about things that they agree have value to them. And so now they'll come in and say, you know, they'll come into the group and they'll see that you are offering your your group, your network is offering X, Y, Z through some arrangement that you all have developed. And everyone that comes into the group, as they take ownership of X, Y, Z, whatever that is, the person who invited them into your network, uh, an income is generated for that person because they invited this person to the network. You understand what I'm saying? Absolutely. It's a business model. Yep. It's an, let me, excuse me, excuse me. <laughs> I almost stepped on my own foot. It's an income model, yes, right? right? No right. one here is a business person, but in fact, we've built a, a, a project that has something that your network values. They're willing to spend money for that thing. And as they spend money, an individual within your network who invited that person gets an income, right? And so there's so many aspects of this, and it's all based on people who have common interests, who have, um, you know, common interests. They have something that um, that they are passionate about, and that's what drew them in the first place. And it's so easy to build on that because everybody's passionate about it. Zach Shahid, I'm going back to you. Hey, for hey man, listen, you were preaching like the social barber said. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I was letting you go for it, man. You know what? Actually, I want to um, welcome Priscilla to the conversation. And you know what? I want to invite the social barber. Come take a seat because you're making some some great comments on here. That I, Come talk about it. You know, I love your comments, but definitely come talk about it. But Muhammad was preaching, and I want to kind of piggyback off of what you were saying, Muhammad, of how you get people into a group and share ideas. And this kind of ties back into uh robert from earlier asking his question but you know i have been in the network marketing industry for a while you know so I, I know about that niche that niche as well too so what i personally did is i saw a pain point for most network marketers and regardless of what company we're in i didn't care what company they sold shakes vitamins or whatever what i decided to do was have a platform to where i teach them how to brand and market themselves online so kind of like the social barber where she's teaching barbers how to market. I'm doing the same way with anybody in the network marketing industry, because one pain point I found for most people in network marketing, especially beginner people, is they will get started with a company and they will spam their Facebook page, you know, with their company's link, <laughs> you know, with their company's product. And that's all you saw. So like one day they didn't have a business. The next day they had a business and they're just spamming all their friends. So now what i do i have a group where i form to help teach them how to market themselves professionally online using social media and not just branding that company but branding themselves as well so regardless of what company you go to people are people do business with people they like know and trust so when you brand yourself online now regardless of what company you're in what company you go to people will follow you because they like you they know you and if they're in your group, like Muhammad was talking about, they will purchase your product because you're in that network. You're in that, you know, that mastermind. So, you know, social barber, when you talk about what you do with the barbers, it just brought to light, you know, what I do with other business owners, put them in that network and help them build, you know, their brand online as well and be professional about it because, you know, it, it can't, oh, she's joining. Oh, yeah. Okay. Social barber, let's get on. And David, yeah, you have to take Hey, no pressure. You're absolutely, <laughs> <laughs> you're absolutely no right. You're having the courage. It's uh, just exciting to have you here. Thank you. Thank you. It's exciting to be here. I appreciate it. I, I always, I just wanted to piggyback on what Zach was saying there. Um, I always try to encourage, you know, a lot of, you know, my tribe, the barbers and hairstylists. Um, you know, they're very excited. They want to get new customers. They want to tell people and, you know, at the end of the day, they want to make more money and so they get really excited. Hey, come get these, this fresh haircut. And it's like, no, you know, every, like you mentioned before, people are looking at commercials all day. They don't want to get on social media and watch commercials. <laughs> they don't want to do it. So they want to get to know people, but you can sneak it in there. Right. So I always try to encourage my, my tribe to be social, like other people's pictures comment on other people's pictures, share 
their information if it matches your brand and follow them. And you can literally target who you want your customers to be. But you can have fun. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And like the customers how are you important. using that? Um, how are you using that principle to um, to increase the revenues of other barbers? How are you showing them how to use those social media principles to increase their revenue? How does that work out for them? Okay, I actually um, I actually own a barber shop. Also, sure. that's how I got started. And so um, I, you know, the social barber is you know been around for about seven months. However, I've been doing this for my own barbershop for the past seven years. So, um, you know, probably more three, the past three years really heavy. And so um, the thing is, is I actually taught a class. There are ways that you can, it's called social listening. You can listen. You know, I always say you can put your ear to the social ground and wait for people to talk about your product. When, you know, people are out there saying, hey, does anybody know a good barber in Dallas? Right. For instance, with, from my tribe. And in those cases, usually I say, hey, you don't even need to, um, you know, don't sell on social media, don't sell. But in those cases, you can jump right in there and say, hey, um, I've got the perfect person for you. Come right in. What time would you like to come? And so it's really awesome. Um, you know, we, we've gotten, I know we've gotten tons of new customers in my own barbershop like this, just monitoring social media, friending people, right? that are actually close to my location. I actually mm -hmm. talked about that in my class as well, showing how to monitor the people in the neighborhood around your brick and mortar business. Mm -hmm. So this may not apply to everybody. Um, however, if you do have a brick and mortar business, you would want to be friends with the people around you. You would want them to know who you are. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. So if they do need a haircut, they'll know to come to you. I've, I've got a couple awesome. of questions and Help me with your first name again, Social Barber. Season. Season. Yes, Season. Season. Awesome. Yes. Awesome. Amazing. I love it. Okay. Yeah. So, Season, um, two questions. One is not related. One is absolutely related to uh, the hair industry. So let me take the one that's not related first. Okay. Give me one thing outside of your, profic your profession as a stylist, uh, one or two things that you absolutely enjoy. Okay, let me tell you something. Now, this is this comes up a lot. I am actually not a barber. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I am a huge so you're barber. an owner. Yes, my husband and I own the barber shop. My husband's a barber, but okay. I have a huge background in technology. Oddly okay. enough. <laughs> so your background is in is in technology. Yes. Huh? Okay. So what is it that you absolutely enjoy? Two things that you absolutely enjoy. I love social media. I really okay. do. You know, like I've mentioned, I had this, you know, I've been doing, like I said, doing things to make money, corporate America, doing things to make money, you know, masters in software development, but I'm loving social media marketing. I mean, you know, and my passion started when I wanted to have a food drive at my barbershop. And so I said, Hey, I need to tell everybody where to come so they could bring the food. And I actually saw, we're in Charlotte, North Carolina, and I saw the story about our first food drive on the Hawaii News Now website. So I was like, wow, this social media thing is kind of crazy. And that's when I started studying and got certified in it because I said, I need to know more about this. I need to make sure I'm doing it right. So I, I really have a strong passion for social media. <laughs> okay. I, got, I kind of got that. <laughs> I kind of got that part. So um, yeah, here's, here's related to styling. Uh, the styling profession is huge, just like photography is huge. So many niches within the styling profession. Is it possible that you being the um, being the person who is uh, who comes from corporate is it possible that you could identify with your husband's help uh, certain products within the uh, within the profession of hairstyling that lots of hairstylists agree are valuable? Yes. They agree that they're valuable. Okay, so let's just say that you could, and let's just say that you were able to work out a definitive contract um, so that um this this product or this service it could be a service right it's even better if it's a service why is it better if it's a service because it it is either it's a service or something that is 
um, hold on a second, I'm looking for the word, um, disposable. Okay. If it's a service or it's disposable, then that means that people have to buy it in cycles, either mm -hmm. one. Right. If it's a service, right. they buy it every month. If it's a site, if it's a disposable, they buy it every two weeks or however, however often. Well, let's just say that you find, with your husband's help, a, a list of of products or a service that all barbers would would agree, or most barbers would agree, this is absolutely indispensable. Got to have it as part of my project, uh, my practice, and you negotiated the contract so that. Um, you were able to get XYZ product or XYZ service at this price. And then you said to your net, you started building a network of stylists and you built that stylist group on social media platforms because that's what you love to do. So you build a, a Twitter group of stylists who are in this certain niche and you build a Facebook group, right? of stylists that are in the same niche. And um, and now as you scale, use, use tools to attract and scale up the number of people that are in that network, then you say to those people that are in your network, hey, you know what? Uh, in this network, we have ownership, we have ownership of XYZ products and services. And um, we have an opportunity for you to not only get the things that you're, you're going to need anyway, but every time you attract someone to our network who takes ownership of XYZ product or XYZ service, an income is going to be generated for you. Okay. Think about what I'm saying. Yes. And so now, just on the basis of you building a network and putting products and services in place that are commissionable, right? you're able to have every person in that network build a separate income as they attract other people to the network who take ownership of XYZ. And so now their income grows as their network grows. Has nothing to do with how many hair, heads they cut. Has nothing to do with how many heads they stock. They get a monthly income every month from people who are in the network who are continually subscribing to XYZ or taking ownership of XYZ. Does that make sense? Yes. Yep. Awesome. So we have a group on Facebook mm -hmm. and that Facebook is entitled uh, Create Lifestyle Freedom. And so I'm going to see if I can remember from memory. <laughs> uh, maybe I shouldn't do that from memory. Um, I'm going to see if I can type in the in the chat um, the URL for this group. Okay. Uh, I'm not going to do that from memory. Let me go over here to Facebook because if I do that from memory, I will mess it up every time. <laughs> so let me go over to Facebook and grab that um, that okay. group. In fact, please go right ahead. I'm going to post the uh, URL for this Facebook group. It's entitled again "Create Lifestyle Freedom," and it's all about. Uh, three things. Number one, having an amazing life, right? Mm -hmm. Number two, with no worries about how to um, meet the monthly obligations, the monthly living expenses. And number three, to make a positive impact on the world around you. That is create lifestyle freedom. It's not just a call to action. It's an international movement, right? And the cool thing about create lifestyle freedom is if you say those three words, to anyone, regardless of what language you say it in, it automatically conjures up in the mind of that person an idea that they already have for what freedom means for them. So in this group, in this Facebook group, uh, we discuss the same things that we're discussing here, how we use the power of relationships and network to build residual income streams so that we can be about doing the things that the creator has 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 created us to do to live in our purpose without having any any sweat about where the money is going to come from without having to go somewhere and grind 40 hours a week i hope that makes sense let me look yeah. for this thing. no yeah. sam sam just posted it already oh i'm so, oh yeah he got it on there 
I actually yeah. just wanted to say that I'm really excited that instead of watching Empire, we're all talking about building our own empire. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Susan, I mean, Susan, because um, I have a lot of friends right now that, you know, they're all excited about watching Empire. I'm like, you're not building your own. Right, <laughs> like, right. How does that make any sense? I mean, even when you're talking about not just Empire, but NFL, right? Like, I'm a big NFL fan. I'm a big Dallas fan. Okay, I'm a Cowboy fan for life. You know, but if the cowboy game is on and one of my business partners need me, I'm gonna go deal with one of my business partners rather than watch the cowboys game because I gotta build my legacy. See, right. what we fail to realize is most people on TV, they're living their dream already. They, mm -hmm. they have already created lifestyle freedom for their family. So right. we gotta build it for our family. Exactly. 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 Oh yeah. Thank you so much for the invite. No problem. <laughs> Make sure you uh you follow me on uh, Facebook if you're on there too. I know you say you're big on social media, so. Yes, you know, I have to admit, I haven't been as big on my own personal one, but I'm going to get there. <laughs> I'm going to start doing that more, so, yeah. Awesome, sure awesome. Now, are you in Texas? I'm in Charlotte, North Carolina. Charlotte, North Carolina. Yeah. Okay, good stuff. All right, well, thanks for joining us tonight. Awesome, awesome. So, yeah, anybody else that want to, you know, jump on in this conversation, you know, definitely take a seat come on in i mean we're discussing a lot of good things on here as you can see from the comment stream um we started with a topic of is job security still real and we got a resounding no for most people on here <laughs> okay then we went into you know uh okay if job security no longer available what are you going to do to provide um some security for your family and then after that question mr muhammad posed the question of does job and income are those the same thing you have to have a job to create income and we've been getting a lot of great feedback from the panelists that have jumped on so anybody that wants to hop on take a seat you know definitely join in on the conversation now we jumped into a new topic you know which is the create lifestyle freedom and what that actually means and how you can build a network of people that share the same ideas as you and generate that income base from a project base rather than a job based income. So we welcome. Awesome. And and Mr. Shahid, I'm going to uh, duck out to give someone else the opportunity to come in and join this fantastic blab. I want to say thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to, to share with the group. And I want to encourage the group to go over and tell a little bird, go over and hit the tweet button so that your contacts uh, can at least be aware that this conversation is is um, taking place. Perhaps Mr. Shahid is scheduling more of these talks and he can uh, give his channel, his Blab channel, so that we can look at his future schedule uh, and be uh, notified when these when these topics come up. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, I would definitely be having more of these Blabs. I mean, I think Blab is an awesome platform to brand yourself. Um, just like David put over there in that comment stream, you know brand no longer applies to products it doesn't apply just to products only it also applies to branding yourself so um definitely with these 21st century tools that are out there guys social media is huge you definitely can brand yourself a lot using social media because guess what guys you don't have to have a job to generate income i mean we've been it's been a lot of discussion about that tonight on this blab people do business with those they like know and trust okay remember that people do business with those they like know and trust so if you have a great idea okay if you have something you want to share with the world what is your talent you know mr muhammad posed the question to everybody today what are two things that you are good at that you love to share with people okay take those talents and you know generate an income from it guys you can do that okay brand yourself instead of you always branding somewhere else branding a job okay building a legacy for somebody else's family what are you going to do to brand yourself to generate income for yourself and your family okay people do business with those who like know and trust remember that so anybody else want to join take a seat you know feel free We're going, it's a great blab going on right now a lot of panelists has hopped on so i want to keep it going as long as possible so Anybody that wants to come on, take a seat, join in the discussion, you know, definitely hop on. Again, this topic started from the conversation that I had. I had a good friend of mine who just recently got laid off from her job.
okay so the initial topic was does job security still exist we posed that question to everybody that was on today we got a resounding no from everybody so my follow-up question was if job security no longer exists and we know this then what are you going to do to supply and provide your family with uh, income to still come in just in case something happens to your job income because the bottom line is most people that have a job never think about having a second source of income because they feel secure but that security is not real it's a false sense of security but most people you know for whatever reason feel like okay they're going to work their job 40 50 60 years that really does not happen anymore guys just think about people you know you know maybe you went through it yourself where you've been laid off you've been fired from a job that you committed yourself to put a lot put a lot of hours into okay job security um <laughs> it's an oxymoron absolutely it's an oxymoron guys so if we know this what are we doing what is your backup plan so then we transition into the next question of do you need a job to create income because most people feel like they have to have a job to create income which really you don't guys there's so many ways to generate income now using technology that you don't have to go trade time for dollars if you know how to leverage your time to create income using systems systems that will work for you 24 7 and bring in income you know to you on a regular basis so yes make sure um please please yeah, subscribe uh to mr mahdi's uh blab over there he has a lot of great topics um that he, he puts out there so definitely please subscribe uh to mr mahdi's blab i'm gonna also if i can get it back on here for those of you fathers forever thanks for joining thanks for joining the blab for those of you who are on facebook i'm gonna try to get my facebook page back on there but um yeah there it is so definitely follow me on facebook as well connect with me because what we have been discussing in this blab is how we have to build networks with each other how we have to collaborate with each other share ideas guys so that way through this collaboration we can all help each other you know generate an income you know outside of a job income guys we all have a lot of ideas out there okay we all have individual talents that we're good at so imagine you're in the network of people that all have different ideas they're great at different things that we can all we can share these ideas together guys and guess what in your network you're only going to buy a product or service from somebody in your network so guys you know definitely link up with me um to do, do, do oh cool social barber thank you thank you thank you for connecting with me on facebook so do we have anyone else that want to hop on on this blab tonight because if not we're going to go ahead and get ready to close the blab out i will be having more of these on a regular basis and i want to make sure i keep getting topics that spark um great conversations like we had tonight so if we don't have anyone else that want to hop on and take a seat what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and close this out for tonight. I appreciate all of my panelists um, that hopped on. It was a great blab session. And, you know, I hope to see you guys. I, I made sure to follow everybody on here. So please make sure to follow back and I will do the same. Hey, no problem. No problem. We're going to definitely do some more of this. Hey, David, I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for hopping on. Thank you for all my panelists, Sam, Mr. Muhammad, David, um, Social Barbara's uh, season um christine thank you all for hopping on tonight and you know what hey thank you tasha thank you i appreciate it hey listen guys i really enjoyed this blab tonight i appreciate everybody coming on this is zach shahi and i hope to see you guys on the beaches of the world <laughs> all right guys i'm gonna talk to you guys soon take care